Greetings, I'm Ms. Kingsley, and this video is about perimeter problems, and specifically we're going to learn about solving for a missing side length of a rectangle when given just one side length and the perimeter. But first, we're going to do a quick review of finding the perimeter of a rectangle. So here we go. So perimeter of a rectangle is the length around the outside of this shape, Rectangle is a special kind of polygon. And so we plus the sides. So in this rectangle, we, if we were to start here and go around, we would plus four, plus eight, plus four, plus eight, gives us our perimeter. Add those together and we get a perimeter of 24 feet for this rectangle. Okay, now we're going to look at what happens when we go to a rectangle where we don't have that much information. And here we go. Okay, so here we have a rectangle that is, we are given one side and then we are given the perimeter. So what do we do with this? It doesn't seem like enough information, but it turns out it is. So our first step is to use the properties of a rectangle to put a number or a letter on the unmarked sides. So if you think back to that rectangle that we saw on the chart paper and think about rectangles, you'll remember that if this side is 12 centimeters long, how long does this opposite and parallel side have to be? Say it out loud. That's right, 12 centimeters. So we're gonna put that on there. Now the same is true with this unknown number. Whatever this unknown number is, it has to be the exact same number for this side length on this side. So we're gonna put that in. And if I were doing this on a uh, paper here, I might redraw my rectangle just to remind myself and put in my 12, my 12, and an N, okay? And these are all centimeters. Okay. What is step two? Step two is we write our equation. So our equation is that perimeter, we plus the sides. So we're going to, let's say, start here and we have 12 plus n plus 12 plus n. And we know our perimeter is given, it's 30 centimeters, so we can put that in for our p. So we have 30 equals 12 plus n plus 12 plus n. Well, that looks pretty messy. What are we going to do next? So our step three is to reorder, um, to group our numbers so that we can add them together. And our numbers are our known side lengths. So this looks like this. We say 30 equals 12 plus 12. Remember, because of the commutative property and the associative property of addition, we can do this, plus, we're going to put our n's together, n plus n. All right, our next step is to, uh, as part of this, is we need to add this known side lengths. So we have 12 plus 12, which is 24. So we really have 30 equals 24 plus n plus n, right? So now we go on to our subtraction part. So in order to find the difference between 30 and 24 of this total length, we're going to subtract the sum of the known sides from our perimeter. So we say 30 minus 24 is equal to n plus n still, okay? So let's do 30 minus 24. We could count on 24 and count up to 30, or we could do our regrouping problem here, and we'll get six. So we have six is equal to n plus n. Now remember, n has to be the same number. So we have to think about what two numbers do we know that add together to make six. We could also think about dividing six by two, if you're comfortable with that, and we would figure out that's our last step. Of, um, for solving is we're going to solve for n and this only works if we say 6 equals 3 plus 3. So n equals 3. 
So it's important to remember that n doesn't equal six. We have two n's, so n equals three. And we can check our answer by going back to all of our sides and see does it work. Is it true that 30 is equal to 12 plus three plus 12 plus three? And if you add that all together, you'll see, yes, it does work. So that's great. Okay, I'm gonna take this away and say, if you want to challenge yourself, you could pause the video and I'm gonna take these away and see, do you remember how to solve this without my doing it with you? Okay, then we're gonna do a second practice problem, which is coming right up. Okay, here is our next practice problem. All right, so on this one, we have, the question is what is the value of M? Um, ooh, I need to go back to this last one just for a second because I didn't label my answer. Ms. Kingsley, that we need to help remember to do that. So my answer is not just three on this one, it is three centimeters. That's what this rectangle is being measured in. So we want to have that label on there of three centimeters. I'm glad I caught that mistake. And those of you that know me know I just got smarter because every time we make a mistake, we get smarter. Okay, let's go on to this one. Okay, here we have eight centimeters, an M, which is a mystery number, an unknown, and a perimeter of 26 centimeters. So let's take a look at our first step. We're going to use the properties of rectangle to put a number or a letter on the unmarked sides. So if we know the left side is eight centimeters, what do we know the length of the right side? Say it out loud. That's right, eight centimeters. I'm going to put that there. Okay, same way, if this is M, whatever the value of M is, that means the opposite side has to be exactly the same. So we're just going to call it M also. All right, so I'll do this over here on this side as well. So I have my rectangle here with my two eights and my two m's. That's in centimeters. And now I'm going to write my equation. So my equation is P perimeter equals, I'm going to add up the sides. Let's say I start here. So I say eight plus m plus eight plus m. And I know my perimeter, which is 26 centimeters, so I'm going to put that in for P. 26 equals eight plus M plus eight plus M. Now we're going to reorder to group and then add our known sides. So this looks like this, where we are now gonna go 26 is equal to, I just take these two and put them together, eight plus eight, and then I add my M's together like this. Now I don't know what those are, so those just stay there. But I do know what eight plus eight is, it's 16. So I have 26 is equal to 16 plus m plus m. Now this is a tricky part where we have to remember that we need to now subtract in order to, uh, excuse me, we need to subtract in order to find the difference. So we're going to take 26 minus 16 is going to give us a difference, which is actually M plus M. So let's do that over here to see what 26 take away 16 is, and we get 10. So now we are going to try to solve for M in this case, and we have 10 is equal to m plus m. So we have to think, do we know two numbers that add together to equal 10? Say it out loud if you know the answer, or we could divide 10 by two to get there. So we have five is equal to m. We could also write that as m is equal to five, but it is five what? Oh, Ms. Kingsley remembered about labeling this time. We have to look up at what was this measurement unit up on this rectangle and our units of measurement were centimeters, so it's five centimeters. Now my last step is to check my answer. 
So I can check my answer by adding and seeing is 26 equal to 8 plus 5 plus 8 plus 5. And if I add those all together, I see that they do equal 26. Okay, let's take that away and this away and these numbers away and see if you wanted to pause this video to do it again on your own to challenge yourself. And then you can, of course, find other problems to do elsewhere. So that is the end of this lesson, and I hope that was helpful, and I will see you next time. Bye.